it's on. <laughs> That's our promo for this week, this coming Saturday's live help. We're going to do a group session and a uh, live one-on-one. -on -one. That's where the, you pay for it. It's $60 per session. A lot more information is exchanged in the one-on-one, -on -one, but the group you can learn a lot too. So tune in this Saturday. I'll put all that information into the description box below. But let me show you where we are here. We're in Palm Coast, Florida, and an interesting problem. This is a rental house. They actually rented it, and they had to vacate the people because of the flood. Take a look. Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. It's on. Live help this weekend. But we are here in Palm Coast today. Uh, this is a rental property. You can see it's vacant. But let me show you the damage and why they've caused it. So we've happening. got water intrusion here on this wall. And you can see even in the front. And they've pulled back that carpet because water's coming up through that uh, seam there at the wall and flooding this room. Let's take a look at another room. They said there was a, yep, two places, look. So all this whole room has been underwater. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on and I'll show you how easy this is to do. So really the first thing you should do is look around the outside of this, of your home. Look at that foundation wall and what I'm looking for are stress cracks. You see these stress cracks right here? You can see a little crack right here, but it's definitely cracked. See that crack goes all the way down, all the way down to the footer, down through that foundation wall. Downspouts are splashed out. They need to go underground. And looks like there's a golf course back here. So that water from the golf course is coming down this direction. You can see a swale here also if you look closely. But that swale actually comes this way. And you can see the brown grass. See how brown it is right here? That water sits here. It's supposed to try to go on down here between the homes, maybe, maybe that way. But regardless, it's not doing that. It's just pulled up right here. So all of that water is definitely moving back towards the foundation of this house. Let's look around a little bit more right here in the back. And again, I'm looking for stress cracks. You see them right here? And unfortunately, they've poured concrete all along this section of the wall. And if you look at this, you can see all the times I've said this many times, concrete does not solve water problems. See this little pad right here? It's sunk down. Can you see the difference in the height? It's sunk down and they've tried to caulk it and all of that because water is getting under there and of course it's moving back up under the floor. So, first thing we're going to do is actually find out what kind of foundation they have. I'm going to dig a little hole here and see what type of foundation is used. Is it a monolithic or is it a, a regular uh, concrete footer? So, what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut some sod right here. Um, I did see a sprinkler down there, so I hope there's no irrigation here, but we're just going to dig a little hole right here to find out where that footer is and what kind of footer it is. So can you see it? They've got a perforated pipe, that's perforated with a cloth around it, and then they've got gravel here on the outside of it. This is not how you do this, and it's also not deep enough. Okay, so this is a monolithic slab. In other words, this pour of the footer is the same level as the floor. So that floor is right here, right? Coming right across here. And it's all part of this foundation, this monolithic slab. They've got this cloth pipe here, the perforated pipe. It's not deep enough to collect any water. You can see just as I push my hand down there. And if it is collecting water, it's actually doing more damage than anything else. Okay, let's take a look and see what's going on. You can see we've got a footer. This is a monolithic slab. So that is actually part of the pour of the floor, which is right here. It's all one pour, which is fine here in Florida. That's normal stuff. They've got a perforated pipe with gravel around the outside of the sock, which is not how you do that. But um, this line is probably pulling water. You can see found it over here. Let's walk along the wall here. 
So that pipe runs all the way down at that same level, comes down. Remember, they've got to deal with a downspout as well. But you can see I found it over here. See that pipe and the sock around it? I found it <laughs> as it comes you know, further out into the yard. These little holes are just marking the pipe. You can see it right here. There's the sock, the sock, the sock, and they discharged it inside of this little half block. Okay, can you see what they did? They ran it through this block, I guess to mark the end of it, but it's just an open discharge. And I don't know if you can see in there, but it's just totally packed full of dirt, which means that it cannot drain at all. So we figured it out. <laughs> So we could clean this line and extend this further out, you know, down into that swale. But what will happen is as water comes down the swale and floods into this area, it's gonna flood back into the pipe, back through the system, and the water's gonna come back up under the floor. You know, doing this yourself, this only took me to explore all this about 15 minutes, and it's not deep. You can definitely take a, a minute and find out what's going on on the outside of your home. You can see here, this pipe's not nearly deep enough. There's the footer. It's just laid right at the top, only an inch underground. Is that going to work? Of course not. That's going to allow more water into the foundation than anything else. You need to put downspout drains underground and send them out to the street. This is common. We've, you've seen hundreds of videos, not just mine, but everyone's videos tells you, send this out to the street. Again, finding this pipe. It's common knowledge that water should run you know, to an open discharge, try to go downhill. So if you think about where would this go, as you follow the line, you'll find evidence of where things go. This one came out and was totally underground, you know, overgrown right there at the discharge. Although the discharge was overgrown and no water could come out, that's only part of the problem. The problem here is that this particular system, this material, the pipe with the cloth around it, it's the wrong stuff to put down here at the footer. So how do we go about solving that problem on the side of the house? There's two ways. One, we, we would recommend that you pull that whole system out, install a new French drain. I like to use Easy Flow and seal that wall up about two inches above grade. All of that will drain over to a sump basin. The sump pump would lift it up and we'd send it right out there to the swale out front. The other option would be to put just a sump pump basin and the pump discharge it to the street, but attach the old system to it. Would I recommend that? No, but you know I will give that option to the homeowners because it might work, but it won't work for as well as a whole new system. Whoever installed that, they, they tried hard, but if you remember, they have a sock, a pipe wrap sock, and then gravel around the outside. For some reason, here in Palm Coast, that is very common. I see it quite frequently here in Palm Coast. Might be from the builder, might be from a company that is doing all these jobs here, but it's the wrong way to do it, and we need to fix that. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains, reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day. Hey, join us this Saturday morning, 7.30 to 11, live help, one-on-one. -on -one. And then at 12 noon, we'll do a group live help. That's where we admit everyone at the same time, and we answer everyone's question. You will learn so much.